60 diesels. So today, we're not doing the will it start stuff this weekend, because we've done like, will it start last time? Will it start before? We've got another will it start coming, which is, might be quite exciting. It's one of more of those Americano things, but that's not here till later on next week. So we're back to repairing stuff. And um, I've even got some of the other projects out. You'll see the Kangoo is in the back out there. She's uh, drying out. Um, I don't know what else we've been up to. Lots and lots of stuff. We've got lots of broken transit skin, broken Ford stuff. You'll see there's a modernish broken Ford pickup truck down the end there. Um, we're also doing some Daihatsu in up there. And, um, and I'm halfway through a lot of Ivecoing. It's like Iveco week as well. So, t but today, do not waffle. I'm back to fixing this. Now you will notice it has moved a bit because we had to put the broken Ranger over a pit because the gearbox a bit's broken. So we've got to get that out on Monday. So we push this there, that there, this, that there, that there, move this, that, 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 to get that there. And we ended up with this here. So what I'm going to do today is finish putting this massive section that you uh, saw me cut out and sort of half scarf in the other day. So I'm on trimming this bit. Need to repair on that to get that in there welded up. You will see that I've quickly whipped the wheel off and we've sort of moved the shock absorber out of the field of grinding. So I'm going to get all of the gack and the under seal off of here so that it doesn't catch fire when I weld it together. And then I need to trim the lip off of the bottom of here but leave this bit so that I get a nice join on that bit. Here it goes. Right, so we have um, removed the lump of steel through here, shoved it back a bit. I've got a bit of a holeage here, but we'll sort one afterwards. Basically trimmed this here, because I reckon I'm going to have to sort of take most of this out. But there's an overlap bracket here, which I've obviously fished off the one in there. So this one's on the truck, that one hasn't got one. So what I need to do now is get this nicely lined up, because it should go in here now. Oop, hopefully. Go under there, big manky lump of tin. And get that beaten into there. Something like that. That needs to be over the outside of there. That needs to be given a bashing. Where's my bashing equipment gone there? Dee -dee -dee -dee. Not a little bit of trimmage to do just there. The man can get it back out again. Yeah, man. Hush, 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 hush. Right. Trimming. to where we want it. So obviously we've still got this bit here to trim on, but this is where it needs to be. Obviously, take this brackley, adjust that bit. We're not far off, so we're going to have, <coughs> we're doubled over here. So I might mark that, completely trim that off through here so that um, we just put one nice weld line through here and it all matches up. But that's not bad. 
there, I reckon. Where's me hammer? Where's me hammer? It's just grafter in it. Yeah, that'll be the one. So, about there, I reckon. Gotta do some measuring. Right, so you can see, sort of see where we've got to over here. Um, now, this is was double layered in here. Well, three layers, actually, in theory, with this over the top of it. But I've taken a little reinforcing bracket out that comes out here, where my finger is there. So, what we've got to do now is just gently trim this piece all the way up round here like this so that we end up with a butt joint rather than one over the top of the other because we've obviously got a bit spare in there so what we're probably going to do is run a we'll pin it at the top up here and we'll run a zip disc through both of them so that um, so that it matches and then the same down here on the bottom obviously we've got some overlap here that's fine zunk and then fill them the zip disc join were weld and then we are one seam rather than two no overlapping um, so i'm going to get finishing cleaning this bit up and then now i very very badly marked that because that needs to be there because obviously this piece is completely chopped off of a uh, of a dead truck and then that is yes that's in the right place it'll all clamp up nicely and then we can weld it all together. Right, so technically we are all sort of cut in here, ready to go. So I'm going to weld, I'm going to run this line down through here. I'm going to worry about this bit later. I might just buzz in here a bit because obviously I've still got this hole there to repair, but that shouldn't be too difficult. And then we do have a, got to pull her up here a bit, but that's fine. So we're good here. We're good on all our original factory spot welds in here. Um, so they need to be pulled down and plugged. And then I've got a wing lip join, but I'll show you that in a minute here. So basically this is going to be one seam altogether. It'll be pucker. So what we're going to do now, we'll put some little seam clamps in to pull it all in together because we've got some of those proper Chinese ones. So that this is, and then we'll just pull this down in one big hit because it won't bow because it's got a big door pillar just there. And then we'll have to be on fire watch as well. Right, so as well take me welding helmet off. We are, I could spend hours cleaning it up, but we're on there, we're attached, that's pretty tidy. And let's be honest, once the ring's on, I'll seam that, that's weld through X primer, because we've cleaned up all these spot welds, because we also have this bit to put back on. Ha, oh, that goes there. But obviously we've got to fill on this hole in the bottom of the wing that I've just, bottom of the wing, bottom of the door pillar, that I've just cut out. So what I want to do before I go home this evening, Obviously, all the spot welds are good on here because this piece came off of this piece originally. So I've got, now I found that earlier on, I've got a big chunk of door pillar, so I'm just going to buzz a lump of this out. Or I might even just make a new one. Bop that in there. And then once that's buzzed in, we'll buzz this on, and then this that's this bit on here. We'll spray seam all of this and then she's good and all we got to do is put that bit in, that bit in, that bit in, that bit in.
apart from a bit of grind ditching the where's my hammer? Final fitting, because obviously we're <coughs> that's much better. That is on there, so back on its original spots. I'm not sure I touch it because it's hot. Repair head on the uh, the missing bit at the bottom of the wing. Obviously she's joined there, seamed all the way up through there, down through here. And I did put a couple of welds in here just to stop that flopping around. And I have run down, I should have seen the inner wing at the top here. And I can also MIG the other edge of the inner wing, which is quite nicely cut in through there. I'm going to get five minutes in a minute. So what I want to do, six o'clock on a Saturday evening before I go home, is attend to the last of the inner spot welds on here. So that means bashing on that a bit. And then there's about ten of them, zub, 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 and that joins those panels. And what I'm going to do then... I shall move you round a bit, so obviously we are seam welded in here. Well, it's a bit of a tidy up, but no one's ever going to see any of this, admittedly, because there's a battery tray across the top of it, but it'll just offend me. We did quickly weld it down here in the bottom, just there, obviously to hold it in place. Now I've got to pull this down onto its um, spot in here. Spot weld this, knock this bracket down over the top, make sure all that. So we've got one hidden spot weld in there that I've tried, but has popped off, so bash that back in. And then once we've gone zunk there, we've got a couple, one there, one there. And then obviously later we'll have to attend to making this cross member fit. That's next. So I'm going to quickly buzz this lot together. And then before I go, I'll get this all ground off, seamed. So if I seam sealer and squidgy all of this, I'll put the, um, the battery mounting bracket back in quickly as well. Seam all that up and then I haven't got to touch this again. That's done. And then next time we'll be um, fixing this bit. And once we fix that bit, we can put all of this back together. Right, so, might be like 8 or 9 o'clock on a Saturday night, so I think that will do me for the day. I haven't put the battery back in for a minute because I'm going to wait for all of that to dry. But all of the welding through here, 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 and up through here, is done. Sprayable seam sealer, Fudgy left my gun out with seam sealer in it, Fudgy. Shootable the fence. Anyway, we've saved that. So basically what we have to attend to next time, obviously putting the battery tray bracket back in, that's easy. That's only like a dop and some welds. Might have to use a battery, battery tray for lining it up, but obviously we've still got this bit here to cut in. It's not going to be terribly bad because it all fits nicely. So we've just got to sort that bit out. Dop this bit on here. Uh, oh, no, no, I did that, that bit on there. Three layers thick, not. And then, technically, apart from, obviously, wheel arch is missing, sill needs replacing. So next time will be, go seam that bit in there, wheel arch, sill, inner sill, fix the chassis member, and then basically, we are ready to run for some paintwork. So we're gonna to have to attend to the windscreen frame, which is solid, but it's not going out like that. These bits, these bits, obviously, all this will need to be under sealed. And then we need to put the truck back together and go and make it look pretty. Um, you can give me some options on colours. Doesn't necessarily have to be white, even though white is easy. Um, and then we need to throw an engine back in it, some wheels on it, some tyres on it, um, some other bits and bobs, fix the interior, put the doors back together, 
demo it and sell it after finding some ramps and making sure everything works. That may take five minutes, won't it? Right, I suppose it might be time to go home. I might just give you a quick tour around the workshop and just show you what we've been doing this week. And I think I've got some other random bits of video footage of me buying top quality treasure that I might just chuck in at the end. Because to be honest, they're not much use to anyone else, but you might enjoy them. So let's go for a bit of a late night workshop tour and then we can turn the heating off and go home. Right, so we're going to start our late night workshop tour here. Obviously this big beast which is quite nice, it's ex Rolls Royce, bought that myself. Um, 95,000 miles, got a bit of a hiccup on the MOT history mileage wise, mainly because the dashboard died the year the last MOT. It comes on and then all of a sudden all the lights go out. That's recording 90,000, so they found one with like 210 on it. So we've got to correct that. I fixed the dashboard and then we'll make the mileages fit. But basically she's done around 100. But obviously it was a bit rusty because it had had a bit of a dinger years ago. So it's had all of that bit to repair as a dinger. We put new sill in it there, obviously door, sliding door sill. Uh, new door bottom in and outer, and it's had a new front sill. We have repaired the Ima bumper that's like gold dust and you can't get. We actually made it out of aluminium, that entire corner. So it's got very minimal flexible filler because it's a big plastic thing and if you touch it on anything it just breaks but that's made it much stronger so that's got to go back on a Hymer so you'll probably see that this week some of them 510 Starline things. Uh, we've got Transit again. It's um, it's done Transit things and um, the head gasket has gone we think because um, it's pressurising and blowing stuff out. Uh, Daifatsu 4-track, so she's been in for a bit of welding-based love. So currently, so far, we have recreated the wing, because that had fell off. Um, we have recreated this in a mud wheel arch, because that had fell off. What we have to attend to this week, i lean you up in there. If you look there, hello Mr Parker, because he this, you'll see that the body mounts aren't actually no longer attached here to the tubular bit. And the tubular bit goes all the way along out the other side to a body mount there that's hardly attached. Rest of the truck is lovely, chassis is lovely, but there's some definite holes. So what we're going to have to do is on this ramp. So we're going to change that entire tube, which means cutting it off the tow bar, taking the fuel tank out, remaking all those mounts up there and fixing that bit. Apart from that, these little, um, little, I think, what is it, an F75? It'll say on the side because it's Japo import one. F76G, apparently, according to the side, have all gone. And if you want something to buy, they're brilliant. I reckon they're so, that's a rugger, technically, because she's Japo import. Got one of them again. It's disgraced itself. Um, we managed to save it last time because... We got to it before the 2.2 Ford base disaster ate itself. So we did some injector work, that cured it. So as that cured it, it decided that a week later at 63,000 miles for the clutch to fall out of it. Top quality part there, Ford. Um, and then I've been doing the last of the bits to me Kangoo because we've got to get it one color because as you'll agree, it looks awful. And then out behind that door that we're not going to see is bloody Trigger the Transit. So we cured all of Trigger's oil leaks. He left. Marvellous. Working perfectly. So it decided to shit some big ends. Disgraceful thing that it is. Right. So nine o'clock, Saturday night. Had enough. Time to go home. So we're a bit further forwards on this. We'll chuck this in as episode two. There will obviously be a three, probably a four, possibly a five. And then you might even have the opportunity to buy it. Because man, don't need another recovery truck. Um, we've got more exciting Will It Start stuff next week. It's more American, did say it earlier. So uh, tune in for that. That'll be next Sunday. This Sunday, this I say, this is this Sunday, obviously. So we're fixing stuff this time. Thank you very much. Al 60 Diesels. <laughs>it's like um, French winter breeding season around ours at the moment. So thank you very much to Leon, YouTube subscriber, for selling me his whole French registered van, which we're now going to go and throw on the lorry. Leaving, it's gone.
Goodbye, Bedford CF. Never to be seen again. So, CF gone. Been buying more treasure. So, uh, Elliot, YouTube subscriber, phoned me up last week, said, did I want to buy a Sprinter? Now, I'd like to point out that this is not the 312 medium wheelbase white eye top Sprinter that I bought in France. It's another one. But I didn't buy this one in France. This one was in Devonshire. But so French registered, apartment 53, 312, medium wheelbase, eye top. Uh, been sat a while. Top quality treasure. Thank you very much, Elliot, for that. And then over here, I bought an 06158 LT with a tipper body on it and no clutch in it to take the engine out of and repair my other LT158 that the engine blew up over there. But that hasn't quite worked out as planned because we were expecting that to be crap and when it turned up it's not really crap and I've just sold it working so I've got to put a clutch and a flywheel in it now put it back together make it work and then find an engine for that again because it only took me a year to find that and then so my first cunning plan of the morning is going to involve a lot of TFR and some steam cleanage this definitely needs a wash this does run and drive so I'm just going to make that look prettier till we can get to it and then this one which I have got to um, wave the spanners at wants to be clean so that less gack lands on me than would if I didn't clean it so I'm going to TFR this one to death with some juicy caustic based stuff to make all the gack fall off of it same with this no auto detailing here at all we're not doing paint processes or anything like that we're going to throw some really juicy nasty eye watering stuff at it to make all the cack fall off of it because let's be honest it's not really going to hurt the paintwork any more than it already is and we're going to do exactly the same with this builder's lorry here purely so that we have two clean vehicles oh my door handles fell off hang on <laughs> fixed um, and then come up with a cunning plan what the hell we're doing with that probably keep that because that's treasure do like an old flat nose 2.9 sprinter and then obviously this treasure is sold profitable treasure needs to be clean and repaired marvellous So, 06, very last, 158, medium wheelbase, a tipper lorry. No clutch. Because uh, the clutch is there, not in it. So the gearbox is half hanging out of it, and the man didn't want to pay for a flywheel, luckily enough. I'll do Volkswagen Ordin, along with my Mercedes Ordin. And I might happen to have a really good flywheel, or four of them. Um... So I've just phoned my friend Simon at Precision Clutch Components at Henstridge. If you guys ever need anything clutch, the man is spectacular. Special builds, repairs, but you could not find a better fella. Precision Clutch Components, Henstridge. Anyway, so now I've just sold this. Running. They're going to sort the painting stuff out. All I've got to do is clean it, get it to go, make it move, and make it so it should pass MOT. 
But that doesn't help me with the fact that now I haven't got an engine for that one over there. But it would be a shame to break this one because it's only done 112,000 miles and it's quite nice. And it didn't come from mine at town council. I bought it in Worcester off a of FaceTube group. But anyway, so we're going back over here now. And I'll show you what we're going to be starting. Right, peoples. As you will see, it's a Peugeot has an axle in it so we did it <coughs> what was supposed to be a quick piece of welding but she did turn out to be a bit more rusty than we expected her to be so i think basically this is a peugeot me and fudgy haven't worked it out might have been sat on this here ramp for um <coughs> for about four possibly five months yeah Hopefully, it's going to do what Peugeot's do, because we've reassembled it. I haven't started it for five months since I pushed it in here. Let's add the fuel tank out, mind. Just do that, won't it? Because it's a Peugeot. Oh, for Christ's sake. Let me do a revolution. See if it runs out of fuel, because we, um... Oh, we didn't put any diesel in it. That's the point. Now that's a, that's a really good point actually. We might just turn that off a minute because one thing I hadn't thought about doing was of course the fuel tank was empty. So, finished Peugeot. Better go and get some diesel. So in theory, that is all the structurals. So as you'll see, back axle is back in. We have no in <laughs> interior at current, but we have... <laughs> we'll give you a tour, welded up all the wheel arches. Brought her back to her former glory. I mean, Fudgy, bless him, he has done a beautiful job. She is minty. We've had to remake the bump stop mounts, the chassis legs, the wheel arches in the back, the sills, the inner sills, and some other stuff. I'm not even going to talk about how much money I have wasted on this 350 quid Peugeot. But, so next, fuel filter housing, put some diesel in it paint the back out where we've repaired it and put the seats back in attach the bumpers sort a couple of bits of paintwork and it's MOT time man is probably going to have some top quality transport look at all the yeah right nine o'clock at night time to go home mm -hmm. 